PWO, 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 PWO. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO WrestleCast. As always, I'm your host, Matt. With me and I, we have the front man himself, D. White. Right, I'm here, and uh, I just want everybody to know that uh, I have some issues with retribution, too. <laughs> As always, number one <laughs> official, Ryan Alvarez. Uh, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax tonight on Raw. Hopefully, Nia kills Alexa Bliss. Oh, she's got that doll, man. Raggedy Ann's going to come after her. Making his return to the show is the wild thing, Mike DeShazo. Cheers. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Mike came ready to play. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, guys, we had two pay-per-views this weekend, and right off the bat, we're going to go right into Against All Odds. That was this weekend. Uh, it was the Impact pay-per-view, if you guys weren't aware. Which was uh, pretty fun, but had its stuff that kind of kind of irked me. We're gonna get into that here. Show opened up with Sammy Callahan and Tommy Dreamer defeating the Good Brothers by pinfall. Um, it was good. Don't 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 act like it was not good. No, Come no, on, it's now, fine. It was fine. You know, you know why? You know why I liked it? I'm gonna just say it out loud. Because it was a hardcore match. It had all the weapons. And they didn't start in the ring with a the lockup. They immediately just went for the weapons, started whacking each other with weapons. That's what I wanted. It's like, okay, all right, well, this is actually a fight. We're not going to pretend they're in the ring or anything like that. So as much as I don't want to see Tommy Dreamer on my television, except in like a backstage role, um, yeah. I, I, I like that aspect of it. It was like, okay, if this is, okay, it's a fight, then it's, it reminds me of the old New, New Jack matches. It was like, okay, well, I'm out here. I'm going to throw the weapons. Oh, now we're going into the audience. You know, that kind of thing. Was also, like, has Tommy Dreamer made a, made a New Jack attire change yet? Has that happened yet? Not yet. Not yet. Um, this one was pretty obvious to predict because um, on the Go Home episode, they said that Sammy Callahan was the number one contender. He's getting a shot at Slammiversary against the Impact World Champion. We'll get to that later. Um, they're not going to have Callahan lose. Come on. No. So, no I mean, I so. saw Dreamer. That was my little bit. And also, the thing is, is that we're continuing this bit where the Good Brothers can't win, which is going to get really tiring. It already is really tiring for me. I'm not going to lie. Well, ta- I'm talking about Kenny Omega. Oh, yeah. and on and on and Don Callis. Oh. Eventually, it's going to come to a head here. I hope so. It's working. It's not working for me. Um, speak. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Here's the one where we, I might bury this the most. This might be the match I bury the most here. Take it. Joe Doring defeated Kojima <laughs> and against all odds. Now, okay, I I get it because we got to do some things for Joe Doring to make Joe Doring look big and strong and great. Um, God, New Japan guys not having much luck and impact outside of uh, outside of Dave Finley and Juice. If so- Finn. Finn Juice getting that little win there and holding the titles for a little bit. That's really only people in yeah. New Japan who've done anything really in Impact. See, and there's a difference between losing and looking bad, losing and looking good. Um, I think I think I think that Kojima is better than this. I think he has to slow his game down to catch up to Joe Doring. I'm going to be flat out honest. If Joe Doring has another singles match it's now it's now it's now it's gonna be a piss break because i swear to god there is nobody with slower movements okay in all in all of impact wrestling everything was whip you into the corner and i'll walk three-fourths of the way over you know across the ring to get to you and then you know same thing about a minute later it's it, it was very repetitive it reminded me of a kevin nash match um to the point where you know, Kojima was making his comeback, and I'm like, they're, they're, they're not going to let him win, even though he still looked good. And, you know, this, is, this, this was kind of what, you know, s- started the tension in, in the late 2000s between Impact and New, and, and New Japan. 
there was there was a lot of front office heat there was a lot of questionable booking decisions to where talent didn't want to go there okay they're gonna have to start if they're gonna want to keep this going they're gonna have to start booking the new japan talent better i think that el phantasmo still looks strong in defeat against josh alexander um I think I think I think that Kojima, like I said, could could do a lot better. But when you're in the ring with Joe with Joe Doring, you know, it, it, there's not a lot that you can do, and it's frustrating because he deserves better. And, and, and Joe Doring isn't really an athletic big man per se. So yeah. you, if you were to get him with like a more of an athletic big man, there could be more stuff that's done. But no, not, there's not a lot of those guys in Impact. They're all on the um, the other company that's working with impact well it'll, it'll come up again later but like man if this was w morrissey versus kojima i probably would have enjoyed this match much much more agreed uh, so you know i know you started talking there one minute watch the mic because i know it's uh, muted at the moment just so you know um but yeah i, I don't know man <sighs> we brought in kojima just to have him lose some people really love this match i just i i i i the moment it started, I was like, oh, God, we're doing this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, I mean, with that being said, I mean, Ko- Kojima's way past his, you know, his, yeah. his best years. And, 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 you know, they had some history, so they probably, you know, you can, he's probably one of the easier people for him to work with. With that being said, the word is plotting. That's the word you were looking for. because you and, you and Matt, you're exactly right to compare him to W. Morrissey. Like big man against big man. And when you said Kevin Nash, oh yep. boy, I was like, he was slower to Kevin Nash. <laughs> yeah. He was just <laughs> able to keep his quads together. Yeah, it's it's anyway, but I, I mean it was I didn't hate it, and I still like Kojima. Yeah, yeah. I just want more for Kojima. I, I I'm at the point now where it's almost like I care more about New Japan continuing to work with AEW and continuing to work with Impact. That's kind of my big thing. I don't want us to break off again because there's so much potential for some incredible things coming up here uh speaking of potential for incredible things up next we have the five way for the number one contender match for the x division title ryan you said you want to take this one um yeah so pd williams trey miguel ace austin chris bay rohit raju five guys that are more than capable in ring five guys that are more than capable of holding the x division gold so in a traditional mold, in a traditional multi-man match, okay, the rules are you win by pinfall or submission. You don't, you know, there's essentially no disqualification. Um, so we get this massive spot at the end of this match where we had Madman Fulton come out of nowhere, and he hits this four-man. It was like a double choke slam and um, almost like a you know, almost, almost like a wasteland and a power slam. It, it looked, it looked cool. Okay. Then we get a no contest. Okay. And immediately I was like, this is some Brock Lesnar, Braun, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns stuff from hell in a cell. Like how can there be disqualification or a no contest in a match that essentially has no rules it's pinfall or submission it makes no sense we're going and everything i've loved about impact over the last handful of months is up to this point in the card i'm sitting i'm sitting there i'm like why am i spending my 7.99 a month you know why am why am i trying to invest my time in this well and you know i i think you're right because Ultimately, if you Madman Fulton comes in, I mean, he does all that, and 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 you still give Ace Austin the win. You can still advance the stories that he won on shenanigans, and it's not you mm-hmm. know you can continue all this. He doesn't it doesn't have to be like that. Like you, you can accomplish the same thing without having this messed up. There's no you know like you said about the the dumb hell Seth Rollins and the Fiend and hell and the oh yeah that too. I mean, or 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 something crazy. Oh. If I can interject really quick, I like to apologize. Last week, I made a mistake about the rules of a board match. Um, and when you were talking about weird endings, uh, technically the four corners thing is not always the rules to a bull rope or a strap match. But apparently at some time, there was a match 
uh, between Hulk Hogan and Vader, where Hulk Hogan actually beat up Ric Flair and dragged him to all four corners. And that yep. was, then he won the match. And I went, that's sort of similar. It's like Madman Fulton came in. And okay, nobody knows how this ends. All right. Well, anyway. I, yeah. I, I, it, you're, the, the ending really did sort of sour what was a, I mean, obviously, it's one of those matches that you did not get up from. You know, that's a, that's a sit down, get you a, get you a full drink, get you something to eat, and watch that match. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, okay. Now, look, this further sets up for King of the Mountain. Like we've talked about, if you watch our prediction show, you already know that's where I think we're heading for Slam Uh Josh Alexander calling himself the King of the Mountain. It just screams, this is what this match should be. And that will be fantastic. It's been a hot minute since we've had one. Um, and I look forward to it. The reverse ladder match is weird, but when done well, it's been excellent. Yeah, Matt, you made a good point, though, when we were talking about it after this match. Um, you know, typically there's a five man, you know, but, you know, if you include Josh Alexander, there's six men. Do you think they would just do it with six men or do you think they would have to have some sort of eliminator and then hopefully this doesn't happen again? So I think one of two things happened. Um, and it sets itself up for shenanigans. If the, I could see them just doing the six men. Um, but also I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they say, Ace Austin, you're out. Your guy caused the trouble. You, you have to deal with it. Um, and mainly, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going back to this. I still think Ace Austin's dealing with some injuries. Uh, looking at this match, yeah. Ace Austin's spectacular. He always is. But, I mean, he's not putting out those performances like he had been. And I don't think this is a mental thing. I think this is him just struggling with staying 100. Good enough to be on TV, but not 100% enough to be the main focus that he can be. I think that's why, I think that's also why he lost the belt a couple of months ago. Um, and this could just be the excuse to take him out of the anniversary match. Because I know I know we have people on this show who would raise Kane if he's not there. <laughs> um, up next, W. Morrissey defeated Rich Swan. I got to tell you, they had me worried here at some points, but the right man wins. And W. Morrissey, big cast, whatever you want to call him, looks like a million bucks right now. Uh, mm -hmm. the look, his in-ring performance was fantastic. Uh, I, I don't think there's any way he could look any better. It's also very interesting to see. I know we're seeing Rich Swan here at the end of the month. Supposedly his contract is up with, uh, with Impact here. So it'll be very curious to see if maybe this is how they write him off, if he doesn't resign or – if maybe they have him finally take some time off. Yeah. Um, this match was everything I wanted it to be. Um, Rich Swan got his spots in and he's, and as much flack as we've given him as far as his title run goes, I mean, he's an incredible athlete. Yeah. And I don't think any of us have ever doubted that. Um, I think that um, a little bit of that world title run, um, some of the same spots play out, play out in this. Um, just kind of the resiliency and the, and the, and the defiance. Um, you know what? Rich Swan got his few spots in. W. Morrissey, they booked this how it's supposed to. He dominated the, from bell to bell. And I don't foresee him being the guy to take the belt off of Kenny Omega. But maybe, um, you know, if we're going to start to branch out and borrow talent, you know, I could maybe see him being kind of that ambassador for, you know, impact, um, seeing as though he's been on a larger stage before. Um, but seriously, they, I'm, I am so happy that, you know, he took the time, got his mind straight, got everything in his life re reorganized. And he he's in he's in incredible shape. Actually, he I is, think. yeah, he's performing better than he ever has. Um, the sky is the limit for him at this point. And get and guess what? He's cutting promos better. Uh, hey, <laughs> to the moon! To the moon, baby! <laughs> All right. Uh, up next, Tennille Dashwood stole one on Jordan Grace uh, and comes up when uh, Rachel Elring is taking uh, Caleb with a K, who we're going to see at next wrestling, uh, off the ring apron. 
Uh, Rachel Elring ends up looking like she's distracting the ref, and Jordan Grace is upset and walks off for further teasing the split there. I'm enjoying this inevitable Jordan Grace heel turn. Oh yeah, yeah, um, and she's a, and she's and see she's a natural heel also. You know, it, it, her. You know, she, she's she's one of the rare people that can that can successfully pull both off. Um, but she's a much better heel, and I think she would be an incredible foe to a super baby face Ray, Rachel Ellering. Um, here's my other question. Where does Tennille Dash would go from here? Because it looks like, um, you know, I, I know that I, I know we're a couple mad matches out, but uh, spoiler, Deanna Peraza retains. Um, As you should have already known. Yes. Um, I don't, I don't, I, oh my Boop god, a spo- oh. Boop a spoiler. Oh, um, eh, yeah. eh. you know, we're gonna talk, talk about it now. It's the only women's sing singles match, uh, we have left on the card. Um, I don't, I, I don't know if Tennille gets a rematch or, or maybe we'll finally get the Taylor Wilde, um, Deanna Perrazzo match. Maybe we'll have a number one contender spot there. Um, I Taylor know you're Wild on. Hasn't been, sorry, I'm interrupting. I apologize. No, Taylor you're fine. Wild has not been around for a hot minute, despite just coming back. And she's a little older, you know, need a little more time off. Well, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I know these things are taped out. She didn't have yeah. too much, you know. Oh, yeah. That's another thing. Um, we're t- we have two months of impact taped. Um, the, ro- the reports that I read, there's no specific time frame in which those two months were taped out, but they have two months taped, whether they, they probably have it taped all the way up to Slammiversary. That's what I'm thinking. Is what I'm thinking. And, they, and the people they already have been in contact with and deals with, they're waiting for the 90 days so they can put pen to paper, honestly. Um, Although there is but, some that may already be done. Exactly. Yeah, a la Mickey James to NWA. Um, but my big thing is, you know, we're, we're, we've talked about this before, how, you know, Dion is at the end of her rope. And I, I just don't see maybe Jordan Grace, Rachel Ellering for a number one contender spot. Um, Tenille Dashwood, I don't know. Um, but Tenille Dashwood's kind of like in purgatory. Like she's winning matches. She's doing what she needs to do. And now she's just there. I think it might be time for the title shot. I think she needs to go to next gen. She might. She might be there. Uh, Up next, Fire and Flava defeat Kimberly and Susan to no one's surprise. Uh, Once again, I'm fine with it. I like how they keep booking Fire and Flava as strong, credible champions. Yeah, you you, you convinced me. Like, you know, I I haven't been the biggest fan from them. Every time I see them, I like them a little bit better for what they do. Well, I think Um, they get better bit by bit. Well, and I would, I still want to see, because haven't we had a little bit of chirping on social media with Big Swole and some, you know, I really want to see that crossover. I really do. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, this was a good, this was a pretty good, I mean, obviously, you know, Susan and Kimberly are good workers. I'm not really down with that whole gimmick. Or, and then I, also I'm not down with the whole, like, that's how you have a tag team title match is you just show up outside their dressing room on impact on the TV show. And you just go, we want to wrestle you for the titles. And they're like, okay, you got to remember it's sort of how it happened. Uh, this is the Susan. Go. Yeah. Into, uh, Scott Demore telling yeah. him you touched me inappropriately. I know. I'm just saying, the lawsuit, just, you get a match. Yeah, exactly. I know, but it, Two professional wrestling. But classes. It was, it was like I literally just watched that happen Thursday, <laughs> and then we right, yeah. then we have a match. <laughs> Actually, I watched it Friday morning on DVR. That's okay, but anyway. Although, uh, but, although fire, fire, and flavor do cut a do do cut a promo, and it was on Impact's Twitter page of you know how kind of rel- how relatively easy and cheap it was for them to you know just kind of weasel their way into a world into a tag title shot, um, which I enjoyed. Um, still am not a huge fan but this is better than some of the other matches i've seen them in violent by design to uh, successfully retain the world tag titles against decay 
just an, another match where just question, just questionable booking, and not the fact that we are letting Violent by Design retain the titles, but it's a heel versus heel match, you know, and it just didn't work for me. It it it, it never got going for me. I didn't care. Um, the K had been working face for a while now. Like they come off as faces to me. Like they're they're mysterious characters. I guess they're in that. Um, I feel I feel like yeah. I feel like they're more. I feel like I feel like they're more tweening than ever. Honestly, because some of the promos, mm. because some of the promos they cut are are kind of are kind of heelish. And then you'll see them in like backstage segments, and it's like, oh, we're gonna get you, like very kind of corny, you know. So it, it's. It's in a weird space for me, but just the whole dynamic of this match didn't work out. Um, good, good to see Von Von by Design get the win, though. Agreed. Well, I, I, I was going to question it. So, if you go to the Undead Realm, do you show up at Daly's place? There was some anyway. There was some weird sort of time travel things happening. I don't know, but anyway, um, I got a question for our special guest over here, a oh, wild thing, Mike Shazo. Uh, how much? Uh, how much do you think Black Taurus deadlifts, man? That freaking dude is—he's he, a man. Man, he, he is, is a very strong man. He's a—he's a big uh, sob. Um, probably around seven hundred pounds. I mean, that is a big dude. He's probably in um, shoot, Braun Strowman categories, so eight hundred plus even. <laughs> so, jeez. Well, not no longer Braun he's... Strowman. It's yeah. Adam Shearer oh, now. No. <laughs> yeah, Adam, Adam Shearer. The, the artist formerly known as Braun Strowman. Yes, but, there um, you go. You know, that's one thing about Black, and Black Taurus. I've seen, I mean, even if you've seen him on in, um, guys, what was he in CMLL? Was in AAA? I don't. I, I, and but uh, I think Strowman, he was in both. But anyway, yeah. But I mean, he's good and all. But it's like some of those guys. Like we've seen it from like Bandito. I've seen it from. You know, they're just freakishly strong people, man. Like you, you look at him and go, Whoa. I mean, gosh, some of the stuff they're doing. He is that dude is a load. But anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the whole tweener thing. I mean, I, it's hard for me to believe Crazy Steve is a heel. You know what I mean? He's just kind of a goofy guy, unless it's sort of like a doing the clown kind of deal. Uh, maybe then I buy it, but. Um, anyway, I, it wasn't a, it wasn't the worst match. I just I'm just not a huge fan of Rosemary, you know, at all. So. Speaking of, as already mentioned, Jan Prado yeah. beat Rosemary. I thought this is a good change up from their previous match. That's what all I got on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna keep saying it. Diana Peraza finds different ways to win and keep herself exciting, and keep herself constantly growing in ring um i like how she won this match by pinfall and not submission i thought that was a great twist um uh, honestly nobody can argue that she's not at least a top five female talent in the world right now there's no question um i think she's been the best female performer since the start of the pandemic um you know, some people could argue Charlotte. Some people could order others. You know, we've been through this whole song and dance before here on the WrestleCast. Um, but this just goes to show you she's constantly changing, constantly growing. Um, get ready for her to win the uh, AAA women's title here at uh, you know, Triple Mania here in two months. Uh, and last but not least, oh, Mike, you got one? Uh Oh, you're muted. There you go. I was going to say, um, could we see Deanna Perrazzo take on a uh, female belt collector gimmick, you know, after she wins the AAA title and cha- she could challenge Britt Baker, her friend, mm. Britt Baker? <laughs> and they've already started teasing that on Twitter mm. with the two of them holding their belts. Um, I, I think we're at a point where Deanna Perrazzo might be there gimmick wise and just with the talent level of. Mm. I mean, there's no one really left for her to beat other than Rachel Elwing, who just hasn't had a chance. Um, I feel like, you know, it's heading towards, even if they do it at the NWA, that all-women's pay-per-view, I mean, that would be a, a dynamite main event, honestly, pun intended. Dynamite main event. <laughs> would make a huge impact, too. Yes. Yeah. Nah. I think my only holdup is I would hate to see Camille, who just won the belt, lose. Yep. This early. That's my only hold. I got it. 
I got a lot of love for Camille. We're gonna have an ex. We're gonna have an exhibition. Okay. Unsanctioned doesn't count. And see, that's the way around stuff like this. And I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Deanna take that on. I would just love to see her get the Oscar treatment, and go that that route. And if we are truly about this talent exchange, let 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 Deanna go some somewhere else. Let her face diff, different opponents. Would it wouldn't be a blow to the Impact Women's Division to not see her every week? Absolutely. But I think with um, with the tag team match earlier and her win tonight i think we're slowly planting the seeds to get the split of of her kind of on of her kind of entourage and call me crazy but i i think i think we'll see a sue young um return for a world for a title shot before diana departs uh to other organizations well, my only thing is that I understand she has a long term, long term contract. I don't think she's gonna become mm-hmm. a free agent anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just I I don't know, man. Taking Deanna off TV would be a would be big for Impact. That would be ballsy. If the trade off is a heel Jordan Grace just destroying everyone, I know you lose the promo stuff there. But what if you have tag team champions that are Iconic. And I do think that's happening here. It uh, has to. But my, once again, my hold up losing, losing down Peraza. I mean, you have lightning in a bottle right now. I say you write it out. Um, speaking of lightning in yeah, a bottle. I, well, don't. Go ahead. But think about you. He, I mean, he, he had me fan, fantasizing about this all women's the NWA thing, especially on crossovers. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, we'd have Deanna, Deanna Perrazzo. You have Serena D. You have Thunder Rosa. You have, I mean, there's possibilities on top of possibilities, you know, including that. I mean, the Impact Women's roster is pretty darn stacked. And, and AEW is, is improving. And now you ha- and then you add in from NWA, Camille and Thunder Rosa and Serena. I mean, Serena D, Allison K even. You know, I mean, gosh, that's some that there's that's some stuff that I would pay money to watch. Yeah, and the important thing, and this is the last thing about this, and we can move on. Um, we keep talking about this NWA All Women's Pay Pay uh, a Pay Per View. Um, don't expect to see Kylie Ray tangle it up with anybody from Impact, anybody from AEW. It, it, and I, I think, and here, no, 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 seriously. Seriously though, here's the thing though. I know. Okay, I think I think the safe booking there would would be to put her in a lower profile match, really, because the the last two two times, and we, I went into a little bit of detail on this on the uh, when our shadows fall prediction show, um, but the 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 two points in her life where she's kind of had to take a step back and kind of re- reassess things is when she is predominantly on the rise, when we're getting ready to put the impact world world title on her, or when she's going to get a huge push from AEW. So I think that's something to take into consideration when we're doing all this fantasy booking is that Kylie Ray is going to have a low profile match on this, you know, women's card <laughs> um, and no, and no fault of her own. I mean, you to do you. Um, we're way off topic. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna have to save that one for for a later WrestleCast here because I think that that's an interesting point to talk about, and we could we could go down that rabbit hole for twenty to thirty minutes. Exactly. But now down to a Daly's place hole. Uh, yeah, hand to Jacksonville. Kenny Omega versus Moose. Guys, God. I think all of us kind of knew it that when these two guys had a one-on-one match, it was going to be fireworks or the pyro pyro that was supposed to happen at the end of a certain death match that we don't need to go into. Uh, But it it was just fantastic. Moose and Kenny Omega. God, the chemistry. So good. Moose looks like a million bucks. Kenny Omega retains the title after a little shenanigans from the young bucks and a ref bump. Uh, which further is perfect because it plays directly into uh, 
into what is happening with Kenny Omega and, and Moose is still protected losing the belt. It, it's fantastic. Um, the word currently is that Moose has signed or has uh, worked out a new deal with Impact. So it sounds like he is staying in Impact, uh, which personally I'm a huge fan of because um, he can continue to be a top guy. Um, and I, I was just blown away by this matchup. Um, this is this is the second best. This is the second best match of the weekend. Um, I mean, there and you know, one A and one B. If you really want to, um, everything you said spot on. Chemist chemistry was there. Moose, if there was any doubt, proved that he deserves to be on the biggest stage. And I think and commentary kept raving about this, especially, especially Tony. Sh- Tony Schiavone, and I bring it up specifically because him being the AEW commentator, um, just giving Moose just just you know compliment after compliment, and um, oh, he's you know three hundred pounds. He's doing stuff like this. He's keeping up with Kenny Omega. Um, I thought this was fantastic across the board, um, you know, and I think the shenanigans at the end. Um, just enhance the story that we're that we are telling here and um i hope we get another moose versus kenny omega match because i want to see more um but yeah okay we might get it we might get it we might get a slam anniversary after what happened after the match yeah and also yeah ryan it was that was i'm gonna say that was the match of the weekend um, it's fair. You're right, kind of one A one B. One, yeah. I mean one A one B, but I was, and maybe it was because I was so pleasantly surprised, like just how well Moose hung with Kenny Omega, and you know the thing is, like, um, anyway, I got into a little bit of a Twitter beef with some ignorant fellow today who tried to tell me that Roman Reigns is superior to Kenny Omega, and don't indulge. My question was, as always, was, I just simply, I just simply replied, "Are you high?" Because you know, but but then but it, he was talking about the oh he's just a spot monkey. I was like obviously you did it. you aren't watching this stuff because dude Moose but but I will say this uh, Moose did a Spanish fly off the top rope. Uh, Moose, like and Kenny Omega. Moose is Moose is a freak <laughs> of nature. I mean the dude is. <laughs> Oh, they're talking he, about guys who just he is, deadlift a, a ridiculous amount. That dude looks like he is carved out of stone. He looks yes. incredible. He moves better than guys his size should. His entrance came out and he yeah. came they're out. Adoring. Looked like a million bucks. <laughs> if you would have asked talk. Me, I told you and he, he can talk. Valuable than Jeff Bezos last night or uh, on Saturday night. Moose is the uh, anti Joe Dorian, as uh, yeah. Ryan just said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, seriously. Well, 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 think of it. He's almost like you, he's he's like the anti Braun Strowman. If you if you if you, if you want to go that, I mean, go to compare. Same kind of size. He's way more athletic. Way better on the mic. Yep. You know, he's it's but he's I mean, still a big dude and has all the power stuff. But he's also super athletic. I mean, Moose. You take Moose from uh, you know his days in, in Ring of Honor. He was he was good, but he always put me in mind of Monty Brown. You know he was like a Monty Brown clone. And then, but now he's like nah, he's way way beyond that. You know, he's he's he is you know making himself to be like a top ten guy. I mean, he really is. So following this matchup, uh, Sammy Callahan comes out and then starts attacking, uh, and Don Callis. Fires Sammy Callahan. Uh, Scott Demore is like, "What are you doing? You can't. What are you? Why are you doing this?" So they've done a really good job on social media playing this up. Sammy Callahan pushing that he's a free agent, but he's still gonna show up on Impact on Thursday. Um, I, I think it's gonna be real good. Uh, everything they're doing with this has been uh, spectacular. I'm very curious to see where they go next. Yeah, yeah and they, this is they just beat. That time portal between Orlando, I mean between Jacksonville and you know, it's, it's just, like an hour you show up anywhere. Private jet. Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, this was this was definitely taped. Like in case in case yeah. anybody was yeah, kind of questioning that. Um 
No, this, this is. I have a, I have a feeling this is how Moose gets another match against Kenny Omega at slam at a slam anniversary. Um, especially you know with the news that came out about a recently released superstar heading um, kind of home. Um, we we kind of wanted to. Home. <laughs> well, 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 well. That well, that's like kind of home back. <laughs> yeah, uh, back to where he started in another promotion. Um, we wanted to see that person versus Kenny Omega potentially at Slammiversary, uh, which would have been a barn burner. Um, but like you said, it'll be interesting to play out. I would, I'll be happy with the Moose re- rematch. I think uh, his style fits what Kenny Omega wants to do in the ring, um, especially since I think Kenny would probably have to do a little bit more of the heavy lifting in a match against Sammy Callahan um, and with Kenny kind of nursing a few injuries at the moment. <sighs> you never know. Death match. Oh, uh, well, just don't King let... of the death match, Kenny Omega. <laughs> don't, let, don't let anybody from Impact build the exploding ring again. Well, <laughs> you mean don't let Don Callis and Kenny Omega do it? There you <laughs> go. Yeah. So... What night do we see, uh, you know, Sammy Callahan, who is now a free agent, the Space Cat is a free agent. What night do we see him showing up at uh, Dynamite? Is it going to be the pre-taped episode this Friday, or is it going to be the live show where he's going to get a bigger pop next Saturday? Oh, it's definitely. I think it's Saturday. Yeah. He's going to come out after Kenny Omega beats Jungle Boy. Mm Mm-hmm. And he's going to jump Kenny. I think that's what's going to happen, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think Callahan will get his match. Maybe this is going to be a uh, Callahan has to defeat a couple of people or something like that. They have that they're pumping out that uh, someone from the board from Anthem is going to be at at Impact on Thursday, and it's the first time it's ever happened. So I, I like this. We're pushing a lot of good storyline with this. I'm very curious to see how we set it up further. Mm. The contract does say Sammy Callahan. But it says AEW at the top. Oh God! Um, all right, that—that's where we're at for Impact. We'll have more for you on Thursday when we're probably live reacting a bit yeah. uh, to some of it. On Sunday, we had NXT Takeover, uh, which was a pretty enjoyable show. I, I was thoroughly uh, enjoyed by it. Yeah, you—you uh, you made a solid point. Um, Anytime where there's an impact show on a Saturday and a takeover show on a Sunday, the takeover show always tends to overperform the, uh, you know, M- impact show. And this, and this, unfortunately, the main event couldn't, couldn't save against all, all odds. Um, would, takeover was the better show. I would tell you if uh, we didn't have a five way and in a no contest, I, I might be saying differently. I, I was so pumped for that five way match that when it ended that way, I was like, uh, okay, all right. It took me a couple matches to get back in. Kojima could have won two, but I mean, yeah, that too. That too. But at this point, I'm just I'm, I'm nitpicking in things that I want. Exactly. Uh, so, starting off the night, Bronson Reed and MSK successfully retained against Legado del Fantasma. Raul Mendoza ate the pin after eating all of the finishes from uh, TK Yeah. Um, and this was fine. This was good. Yeah. Uh, in-ring action was fantastic. Uh, I, I like the finish. I like the fact that Escobar didn't eat the pin. I think that was a very key element that needed to happen. Um, now we need to do some stuff to get everyone in the Gaudel Fantasma on the winning part now, though. We need to go back yeah. to that. Yeah, unfortunately, I feel like Santos Escobar is going to lose a title match to Bronson Reed come Great American Bash. Uh, I, I I think that's kind of the next step and kind of the progression here where I didn't eat the pin, so I need my one-on-one title match. Uh, so, uh, let me talk to you. Uh, he already has a title now. I think Bronson Reed's going to drop the belt at Great American Bash. I'd be fine with that, but is it too early? Is my uh, is my? I mean, so I think he's gonna get pushed to the main event because you need someone for Cross to beat. 
No, and I and I, I I think Bronson Reed's headed to the main roster. Ooh. Oh, don't say that. Don't do that. Another hot take. Okay. Uh, Put him at the table. (laughs) So my so my whole thing about this was we said it was too early for him to drop it here in the in this match. But yep. now we're looking two weeks ahead, and it's and it's where he's going to drop it. And so, uh, I mean, so then why not just do it here? You know? Oh, sorry, three weeks. You know, like I really like don't. Almost a month, man. <laughs> All right, three weeks. We're not we're we're not pushing it to a month. All right, so three weeks later, now it's now it's the appropriate time to have him drop the belt. Um, I do agree, though, that it should probably happen in singles form instead of this chicanery. Although the rematch could have happened at Great American Bash instead, um, but I'm I'm sure um, we're gonna get like a world title eliminator match or something like that. To, um, you know. by by the time that Great American Bash, was, <laughs> it'll be about two months since he's won the belt. God, it's been that long already. Yeah, dog. He won it May 18th. Maybe that's why I had him dropping it in the prediction show. Maybe. Um, yeah. I, uh, hey, hey, you guys, you, you, want, you want a little sneak something in here? Yeah. ROH favorite Joe Key. Joe Keys was on uh, AEW Dark Elevation tonight. So, um, Ring of Honor. Fan of the show, Joe Keys. Yeah. Ooh, Wait, one yo, more time? Anyway, he's on Dark Elevation. Oh, oh. Fan of the show, uh, Joe Keys. Hey, Joe. Not only a ring of honor, a... but a friend. Friend, not a fan. Well, he's on Dark oh, Elevation hey, today. So. Family. Mm-hmm. All the Fs. This is, this is why Camille gets all the love on this show, despite being also, or no, uh, on top of just being a lovely woman. Also, friend of the show. Uh, yeah. yeah. Who's, who's going to kick everyone's ass? I mean, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. She can do that. I support it. Um, just don't, just don't hit Thunder Rosa too badly. That's all I ask. Uh, Zia Lee versus Mercedes Martinez. Zia Lee re- uh, gets back her win from four years ago in the May Young Classic. Uh, fantastic. My only, my only hold up with this one, I thought it was good overall. Uh, it took a little while to get to the pin. Um, That's my only, my only gripe. <laughs> It was kind of sloppy, um, it, um, you know, and uh, and that might just be be me nit nitpicking a little bit, um, but there were times where Zaylee seemed to struggle with uh, you know keeping the match pace, um, you know, and I'm I'm not sure you know why there was a sense of struggle there. Um, but, the, but don't get me wrong. This is not me taking a dump on the uh, Zylie character. The Zylie character, okay. And I and I and I want to straighten this out now. I don't have a problem okay. with the character. I have a problem in the way she's being booked and how she's being utilized. If you have a new character and a new gimmick on one week, and you're trying to push this one character and or gimmick. Have them constantly on your television. Don't have them off TV for a three-week span. So now we have Zia Lee, who just won. All right, so I'm fully expecting her to be on TV tomorrow night. Real quick. Pause. Time out. Eva Marie just defeated Naomi with a little help from Piper Nevin. <laughs> it's not Mercedes Martinez. Mercedes this- to come back and lose to Mei Ling. Or Mei Ying, sorry. This looks so weird. <laughs> Eva Marie's back and she immediately beat Naomi. <laughs> I can't wait to see Twitter in the morning. <laughs> um, is that the name she's going by? Is she still going by Piper Niven? Or is um, she going by something completely different? I'll be honest with you. I only saw the tweet pop up from Sean Ross Sapp. By the way, Sean Ross Sapp, wonderful guy. Keep doing your job. Screw the haters. Give credit where it's due. I get a lot of my stuff from Fightful. No one, no one else got love for Sean Ross Sapp. I mean, I think you said well, everything that needs. Yeah, you you said everything no, that needed to be said. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, 
I'm not going to fillet the guy. I mean, but he does great work. Um, you know, and, and you just totally just killed my vibe because Eva Marie back on TV when we're getting ready to go back on the road. It's a fantastic choice by the buck tooth idiot, Kevin Dunn. Thank All red God. everything. Thank God uh-huh. he's still he on the red the red. Oh, hey guys, oh, oh. guys, I do just want to remind you that we did have to make some budget cuts recently. So yeah, we, well, had, we had to be hey, for this time on TV. Well, Not to well get let, you let me read. tell you something there. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Alvarez, uh, you uh, Sean Ross Sapp is definitely better than your namesake and a certain uh, Meltzer. But anyway, uh, I'll say that and I won't hesitate. But uh, let me just throw this out here too. Also, I read I read earlier today um, from uh, from Case I'd seen. It's been one of the stories that was going around just there today. Rumor roundup: uh, the tickets aren't really selling very well for the. For the WWE on the road. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I, yeah, I disagree. I read something earlier today where tickets have started booming since they started selling the SummerSlam tickets. Um, at least, at least up forty percent. And that's PW Insider. Shout out to PW Insider. Let's pause on that. Bring it on back. Just, just, Finish up NXT. Just, just, All right. Yeah, let's do uh, that. So after that, LA Knight defeated Cameron Grimes to become the million dollar championship. I don't know if I've ever seen friend of the show, uh, Drew McNeely, so happy. He was riding the gravy train. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> YouTube, please don't demonetize us for this. He was the conductor <laughs> of the gravy train. There you go. Uh, Shoot. He <laughs> was a happy, happy guy. <laughs> no, this match was totally fine. And yeah, um, props to Cameron Grimes. That man took a lot of damage, especially the final shot there. Oh, um, just the no, just just the trust fall off the top of this ten foot ladder onto another ladder. Just props. That spot was probably the spot of the night, honestly. It's one thing that sticks in my head from it. I just can't see it and like not squirm a little. Like my back hurts thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Not made to fall off ladders. On to <laughs> other ladders. A, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. That was one of those when you saw it and it was like, yeah, yeah, that that there's no way that felt good. And if he's not on TV for a couple of weeks. Good. I mean, whatever. Fine, man. Recover from that. <laughs> you know. It's funny you say that because they actually had a um, network exclusive where he comes back backstage and um, you know Dibiase's getting interviewed and Cameron Grimes just walks up and he says, "I'm sorry, Ted. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry." And then just walks off. Like, <laughs> um, I got a feeling he's he's gonna be on TV this week. He's gonna be a baby. He's, he's gonna, gonna be a baby, gonna be a baby face. He oh, hundred percent. And he only wrote two words. I tried. I like. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know that, like that, just suckers it and people a little bit there. Like, oh, put well, on the I, line, got dropped. You know, let me just say something really quick that we that we um, skipped over was like I thought they really did a lot better with the sort of 80s graphics like the mid 80s graph you know packaging they did for the whole in your house thing i thought they did a lot better with that than they had the previous time because it was kind of kind of like all over the place before this is really good and let me i will say this though and the voice is unmistakable if you watch watch the uh the wwf in, nine, in the mid 80s todd pettengill um but when todd pettengill came out for a very brief second, I thought it was Ted DiBiase Jr. Like for like for the very briefest moment, and I think, oh, oh, is that? Oh, never mind, it's top thing. But I gotta tell anyway. you, he came maybe, out, and I was like, maybe that's just me. Who is this guy? <laughs> I what? like I, like it went completely over my head at first. I was like, what? Do we have like a special announcer? Where's Poppy? What are we doing? <laughs> well, no, you know, Ty, it's funny started. like that. You know, back in the day, you would have me and Gene would do the like backstage interviews and stuff like that. And but like when you'd have the behind the scenes, and Todd Pettengill would be sitting in the like control booth with all the TV monitors and 
talk about it. And then occasionally they'd have him do backstage interviews. I remember a really hilarious one with like Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov where he was, you could just tell he was just like off the rails. It was awesome. Of course, his Iron Sheik, she's probably, you know, loaded to the gill. But anywho, good to see Todd Patton go. Up next, Raquel Gonzalez successfully retains against Ember Moon. Um, I don't think anyone's surprised. This match was okay. This may have been my weak spot to the night, if I'm being real. I think oh, yeah. someone else really stepped up big. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on that train. Um, you know, it, it was good to see Raquel Gonzalez do um, one or two new, new moves this, this time around because um, – and I'm sticking to my guns here. I called her Kevin Nash as far as her in move, her in ring work, as far as, you know, she has, she has a set of moves. She, uh, she executes them safely, you know, get in, get out. Um, I don't think that there was anything to write home about. I still think that she is one of the more weaker NXT champions of recent memory. Um, you know, and I, I know that's hard to, uh, you know, I, I know it's a big statement because, you know, we had uh, EO have it for almost a year, maybe over a year. And um, the, the, the title has a, you know, kind of a weight to it. I, I, I need more. I really do. And um, she, I guess she was working heel in this match. And two weeks ago she was working face. And I think that's a, another problem with Raquel Gonzalez's character is, is who is she? What, what is she? Because she, she, cause she doesn't even know part of the match. She's, she's working as a heel part of the match. You know, she's, you know, work, working as a face. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, and it's, and it's all about the mannerisms that you take within, with, within the singular match. You know, and it's how well you're working with your with with your opponent, and I just don't think Raquel is there yet. Um, and I really wasn't a fan of the Dakota Kai chicanery, um, especially with the questionable referee's discretion, where she literally pushes the rope to where <laughs> Raquel Gonzalez right. can grab it to break the submission. And then the rep is just like, okay, I'm just going to let this go and slide. This is fine. Cheating, you know, and then still has the hold yeah. broken, you know, it just, I, I didn't like this match. <laughs> I really didn't. Referee, hey, referee, 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 Pee Wee Anderson would have kicked her handle within the ropes. That's what he, and that's, done. yeah. And, that, and that's what she should have done. Red right. shoes well, let me just let me go down the list for you. Yep, red shoes too. Well, let me just go down this list. Uh, Paige, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Asuka, Ember Moon, Shayna Baszler, Kyrie Sane, Shayna Baszler, Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair, Io Shirai, Raquel Gonzalez. One of those things doesn't belong in that list. Yep. One of those things is we... not like the other. No. <sighs> yeah. I... I don't want to sit here and act like she can't ever live up to the hype. Because I'll sit here and tell you right now, Rhea Ripley, after she won the NXT women's title, it, it was a very much the same thing. We were very excited for her to win it and then just kind of flatlined. Um, I think there's room for, for Raquel here to grow, but we got to start working to her favors here. We, we can't be putting her in supposedly these big technical matches. I would have been okay. This match was about, I think, 12, 12 and a half minutes long. 12 minutes, 40 seconds long. If this match was seven minutes long and uh, Raquel drops Ember Moon with two of her power bombs, I'm good. I'm good because you can show uh, Ember Moon being resilient and you can just show off that Raquel's strong. Well, let me tell you why you're wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're wrong about, I'm going to tell, tell you why you're wrong about Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley got the NXT belt and who do we put her in a program with immediately? Charlotte. She was not ready to be in a program with Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Now, if we left her at NXT, let her dominate NXT and build up as the NXT champion, that's one thing. What did they do? They hot shot at her to try to put her in to them. You know, which, she was not ready to be in a program with Charlotte. Let me tell you who's also not in a program ready to be a program with Charlotte. Raquel Gonzalez. Raquel Gonzalez, I don't know that she's go ever going to be she doesn't have the same potential Rhea Ripley has, I don't believe. 
and, and that's just me. So I'm not sold on her as a champ. I'm not sold on her as anything more than just a member of the roster. There's other people who need to be in that spot. It's not her. Mm. I don't know. I, I think there's room. There's room for it, but we got to see some continued growth here. That's my only thing. Book her consistently and, and book to her strengths, not her weaknesses. That's a big thing. NXT really does try and push the boundaries, I feel, but you got to book to her strengths. This is, the, this is where they should take a page from the main roster and, you know, book her like the main roster books Goldberg, Okay. What are goal? What are Goldberg's strengths? Hitting spears, hitting jackhammers, and getting out of dodge. Okay, I'm not the saying entrance, the entrance. Entrance. The entrance. I think he's better than that. But. Okay, all right. right. So, so, People knocking yeah. on his door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, what happened when we tried to book him out of his comfort zone against the against the Undertaker in a in a nine plus minute match? We almost dropped the Undertaker on his damn head, okay? And yes, but neither of those guys should have been in the ring either way. No, 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 no. And that's no, no, and that's and that's fine. But what I'm saying is the way they booked Goldberg since his return in 2016, okay? Book him to his strengths, exactly to your to your point. Book short, book book short matches where you can still build character and still build storyline. If you can't do that, then you shouldn't hold the title. Well, you know, it's, it, and I'm going to go back to you, Kevin Nash comparison, because it's a lot like Kevin Nash. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Kevin Nash, well, well, Diesel was Heartbreak Hit Shawn Michaels, you know, attitude. bodyguard, yeah, bodyguard. And then they were, but then when he turned face to won the title, you know, that's, he beats up Shawn and he goes to face and now he's the champ. Well, you could do that with Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, right? Except Raquel, Dakota Kai ain't at the top of the card. Neither is Raquel Gonzalez. It's like a mid-card women's version of Kevin Nash and Shawn Michaels, but it's not as good. It could be. I'd tell you keep Raquel the heel because I think Dakota Kai is good enough to at least gather sympathy and get the crowd behind her. Like if Raquel suddenly goes, I think what you're you're not <clears throat> Mm. Mm. Brings the fat. I think it, I think she I think she just needs an air horn and then on her entrance. That's gonna why does it. everyone come back to the south? <laughs> Give her um, the trade. Last thing, and then we can move on from this. Um, I want to throw out put, potentially one of the next challengers or two to the NXT women's championship that would go well with the storyline. Um, somebody who's out with injury right now, somebody who is on their way back into the ring, tore her ACL last year in September. Tegan Knox. <laughs> Tegan Knox. It blends right into the story. It's it, it's there. Okay, this is this is another way where we can continue to build the character, continue to build this feud. Just do it. It's easy. Sarai. But Sarai is. <laughs> But do we Sorry. want it to be Tegan Knox? Because every time she wrestles, she tears an ACL. I hate saying this. I'm with Mike <laughs> on that one, too. <laughs> she no, was no, no. great when she was in Britain. Australia. I mean, she was phenomenal. But every time she gets in a ring in America, for whatever reason, she tears an ACL. And it's always the big matches. It's always the, like, hey, she's going to win the Mae Young Classic. Tears ACL against, I think, Rhea Ripley. Um <laughs> Gets um, the title shot against Io Shirai. Tears ACL. Saray is teaming with Zoe Stark at the moment. So expect that to be a thing. And Tegan, I, I, she, she could be a potential challenger or two away from a shot. Because we still haven't seen her in range. She's not at the performance center. But, but, but typically we're you know, coming up on, you know, month nine to 10 here where you should start to be getting back into the ring from this sort of injury. So just another face to, you know, throw into the already crowded, boring women's division of NXT. I don't think it's boring. I think there's enough potential there, but we got to pot shake some things up a bit. Build story. Superstar shake up here and move some Build. around. You know, NXT is not getting included. No, but uh, maybe they're just. I don't need maybe them they're just getting. Well, I need well, them losing people. 
I, I, I think maybe they're just holding the belt waiting for a first, a, you know, a certain third generation superstar that's been out there. And oh, yeah. Main event, main yeah. event. Carrying Cross successfully retains in a fatal five way. He wins by submission, defeating Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, and Pete Dunn. This match was spectacular, and we could rave about it for hours, honestly. Um, my only holdup was kind of the flat ending there. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly has Adam Cole in what looks like a double leg knee bar. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Cross comes over and puts him in the cross jacket. So he takes him off of the legs, and then Kyle O'Reilly passes out. Yeah. Um, it was a cool visual to see Cross kind of, you know, come up from behind Kyle O'Reilly, and that was fine. But, no, I completely agree. It was a very – it was a very somber ending to what was a very bang-bang type of match. And it, everything just flowed so beautifully. There were multiple spots in this match where – it seemed like everything had been rehearsed and, you know, maybe it had been, but, you know, and it could be just the familiarity of, of the fact that these four guys have been working together for the last three to four years. Um, but no, this, this is my match of the weekend. Um, I guess we'll find out in the days and the weeks to come, whether it was a good decision to keep the title on carrying cross. So one thing I really liked about this match is, you know, typically on the main roster, when you have a four-way or a five-way match, it's just two guys working. Everyone else will get knocked out, and then two guys get in and work, and it'll kind of rotate. This one, they did it predominantly with the four guys that weren't carrying cross because he was always taken out because they would all gang up and take him out. But then they got in, and the four guys who've been in NXT and working together for years and years and years, they put on a show. They really did. Um, I know someone was saying Karrion Cross put out there that he defeated the Mount Rushmore of NXT. Oh, uh, that's pretty good. Honestly, I put I, Kyle O'Reilly on that. I hope that. it's used in a promo. Um, it, is worth, it is worth noting, and we kind of glossed over it a little bit, um, but right as Johnny Gargano is coming out to the ring, we see in the backstage area kind of, kind of the women's championship match kind of breaking down um, because shots because Shotzi Blackheart came out made the save uh, because Dakota Kai was being heelish so as Gargano is coming out of the ring we see just utter bedlam in the backstage area just all four women just continuously going at it and on top of that there were about two or three vin- vignettes um, leading up to the main main event that we saw the competitors in the main event just kind of going at it, chirping, pushing, shoving, um, which leads us to the end of the show. Yeah. End of the show, we get a cut to William Regal as he's walking out. And some, uh, they go to interview him, and he says, you know, I've been the general manager here for seven, eight long years. Um, Golly. I've never seen the show in – such upheaval and maybe it's time for nxt to have a change so the hint here is that maybe william regal is stepping down as general manager uh the report came out today that samoa joe is back with wwe and the big theory right now is samoa joe is about to take over as the uh on-screen general manager of nxt this is a I I know everybody wanted to see him back to in ring action, but if this is how we get Samoa Joe, I'm all I'm all for it. Joe is an outstanding talker. He is an outstanding kind of authority, you know, authoritative figure where he can command the room, you know, and it, it, it it's it's definitely he's the yang to William Regal's yin, you know. Where you know William Regal's typically calm and cool and collected, yeah. And I feel like Samoa Joe is gonna definitely give it to shake up it needs. Would you call him a great ball of fire? Uh, uh no, because uh, then I have to think about that awful song or that pay per view that he made evented. Oh, uh, that one and only show, yeah, yeah, go. All right, so uh, so here's my thing ultimately. Here's what I want. Uh, most of y'all have heard this. Do you you have not? The show is out of control. You need to bring mm-hmm. someone in to fix that. 
and you are telling mm-hmm. me that there are guys fighting all over the place. They are <sighs> disrespecting professional wrestling. We need to bring in a group of guys who know that that ring is sacred. And we need Imperium to come up and clean house. They got to teach everyone how it is. And here's why. And I, I look, put the belts on Imperium. I know we've already talked about it. We've already done a little bit. Put them back on. Put the tag belts there. Give them someone else. I don't care who their fourth man is. Have them win the North American title. Bring over uh, Kaylee Ray as the as a fourth <laughs> member or fifth member to win the Women's Cup. Give me Walter versus Cross. Oh, gosh. Give me oh. Walter versus Cross, and you just tell them, here's who's winning. Burn this building down. Gosh. Just let them go. Let them go. Can you, can you imagine that match? I mean, seriously, I'm all about Repay it. Repay the so, fine for blood. <laughs> you, you have sold me, Matt. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, it makes now, a lot of sense. <laughs> I want it, which means it's not going to happen. <laughs> the curse. The curse. <laughs> now that it's been said on the show, it's not happening. Overall, guys, uh, one by one here, give me your thoughts on either show, this weekend of shows, NXT. Hit me with your opinions here. Give me some hot takes. All right, I'll, I'll start off. It was good. It was a good weekend of wrestling. Um the one I, I'll say, the one complaint I think Imp- Impact show was too long. I think we could have we could have erased one of those matches and we wouldn't have noticed. Um, and I, 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 anyway, on the NXT show, nobody commented too. Did you see Johnny Gargano obviously wearing the Heartbreak Kid <laughs> little jacket? Um, oh my gosh! Austin it, theory was uh, Austin Power. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all right. I, I got it. But um, yeah, it's a good show. And, you know, consistently NXT does that. Uh, cons- in- Impact has been putting on good shows. I'm liking to watch them. Um, God, I hope, uh, hope they sell WWE to uh, NBC and they put Triple H in charge of the whole thing. Um, what this weekend showed to me is that and this is something that kind of hurts me to say a little bit um, because I have been a huge fan of Impact's programming for a while. Uh, first, first of all, this pay-per-view is a step back for them. Everything except for the Kenny Omega match. Everything was a step back. Um, you know, and it's very unfortunate to say because everything that Deanna Perrazzo does is fantastic. Um, you know, Violent, violent by design started off so hot, and I feel like they've lost the ability to use Eric Young in matches, and now they just have no direction. Um, but this has also kind of been eye opening, um, because you know they've gone head head to head on multiple weekends now. The NXT mid mid card is miles ahead of the impact mid card and that's kind of where you lose a lot of that steam in shows like this where you see impact that had an impact plus card they had nine matches on the card 10 minutes apiece to dwight's point it was too long and you book matches that long somebody's bound to get exposed and it was the mid card and below for impact wrestling whereas takeover five matches I'm, you know, and to you know, varying degrees, it was it was a it was miles a better show. Um, two fantastic main main events. Um, I think when the I think when Impact does these Impact Plus specials, um, they need to kind of short short just shorten them up a little bit, clean clean them up, do just enough to keep telling the stories you want to keep telling. Because what was the big storyline across NXT TakeOver last night is that it can, it's continuously getting out of control. And they didn't have to do it through matches. They did it through a uh, 30-second vignette here, 30-second vignette here. You know? And with the five, five matches, it flowed so well. And then you look at Im- Impact, we had a Joe Doring match, which was bad enough. The no contest with you know, the Fatal 5-5 five, five way. 
multiple tag matches. Um, you know, it just we just need to do better, I think, across the board for impact wrestling. Mike, um, what here? I'd like, I mean, I think uh this NXT was probably the best NXT card in quite some time. It, I mean, honestly, the um the main event was phenomenal. Um the two women's matches left a little bit to be desired. They weren't as good as, you know, like if you go back and look at, you know, any of the Bailey versus Sasha Banks matches when they were there, or Io Shirai matches, because, you know, Io is probably the best they have. But that the main event was just, it really, it really boosted the show. And, you know, if that main event wasn't that main event, I would say it's like a three, of five, three out of five. But with that main event, it's definitely a solid four out of five in my eyes. And like Cod was saying about Impact needs to do better, and they've been doing good, but this was not good except for the Kenny and Moose match. I mean, he nailed it on the head. I just feel like we phone in a lot during the Impact once a month specials. And if we're going to do that, we can reduce matches and do a little bit better, I feel. But guys, we've gone over here. The voice of God, thankfully, hasn't smitened us. God, hit him with the plug. Guys, this is going to be really quick. Facebook, you're on it. YouTube, get on it. Twitter, in, Instagram, go check out Dwight on Odyssey. All right. All of these links are going to be in the description below. Two things to note before I get to the Kofi. Um, one, congratulations, Mr. Fred Rosser, Mr. No Days Off. Um, officially signs with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, if you're not on it, guys, he has done a tremendous job as being one of the most, as being one of the more underrated guys this past year. He's doing incredible work, and I'm really happy that he's getting a contract, which means we won't see him at Next Gen, which sucks. Um, point number two, Monday show, that would be June 21st. Um, that would leave us six days out from Next Generation Wrestling, the Party Bowl, which means friends of the show, runners of the of the asylum. Cody and Eddie will be back to put their final plug in for the Party Bowl. So, guys, you're not going to want to miss that Party Bowl. Like we said, is June 27th. Doors open at 5. Show starts at 6. Um, guys, t- there are limited tickets available. Get there now before you don't get a ticket. It's very easy. Go to nextgentn.net, click on tickets. Um, you know, it's $18 for adults, $15 for kids. And if you like what you see, you like what you hear, you like the YouTube, you like that we keep bringing all these amazing guests back, or you want to see more guests, guys. Support us. If you're watching us, it's in the link below. If you're listening to us, it's kofi.com slash PWO123. It's as easy as one, two, three. And for just the price of a cup of coffee a day, you can continue to support Podcast World Order. Please drive safe. <laughs> uh, I think I speak for everyone when I say I want to see more wild thing on my TV. Ooh. <laughs> I don't have another beer so <laughs> <laughs> with that guys have a great week we'll be back here on thursday of course if you're on the youtube you're gonna check out a bunch of shows that get dropped throughout the rest of the week we'll be back here live on thursday have a great week goodbye good night bang